So much to my surprise, the show has been pretty rapidly growing over the last few weeks. My daily listens are higher than they've ever been. Uh, the number of those listens is sustaining over time. So I want to make sure that I am continuing to point out things that are important to me. And as new listeners are coming in, I want to make sure that I am revisiting things that you know, almost acted as a mission statement for me in the beginning. All of that to say, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So I think it's important to take a few minutes, talk about mental health, talk about where I have been at recently, um, some things I am doing to try to improve my mental health or some resources that I, I like or resources I want to direct other people to. Yeah, this should be a short one. Don't have a lot to cover, I don't think. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I want to talk about mental health. I want to point it out. This month is going to be a very heavy focus on mental health all month long. I'm Zach Van Ness, and this is Grinding to a Halt. Just to recap for newer listeners or people who haven't gone back to episode one with Cave Hoda, where I talk through the worst mental health experience I have ever had, kind of what was causing that, factors that were going on, things I was doing or not doing, and then how that led to me planning to take my own life. I have always dealt with depression. It's been with me for as long as I can remember. Finding happiness has always been a struggle, and even little things like day-to-day -day happiness, it's not something that I organically feel. It is something I am very good at projecting and pretending that I am feeling, so I can very easily mask it. Um, but true happiness is not something I, I really have ever felt in any sustainable, meaningful way. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. But I also for most of my life struggled to communicate what I was feeling, communicate that I wasn't feeling happy, because I, again, I was very good, not was, I still am, very good at masking and making it seem like things are okay when they are not. So I carry that into work relationships, into my personal relationships, whether that be with friends or with my wife. And there was a time a couple of years ago where it was getting out of hand. I was the lowest I had ever been. And I had never gotten to a point where I learned how to talk about what I was feeling or got to a place where I felt like I could or was deserving of reaching out for help. Of saying, hey, things aren't good right now. Or just being able to openly tell someone I can't do something because I feel like my whole world is falling apart. Internally, I am so broken in this moment. So I got to a point where I planned to take my own life. I wrote my notes. I left the house. I was going to do it. My wife stopped me. She is the only reason I am still alive right now. So it is because she checked in. She knew something was wrong. And she checked in. It was not me going out or me seeking that. So since then, I have, and I'm not perfect at it, I still struggle with it, but I have gotten better and I am constantly working on ways to say, hey, today was a bad day. I don't think I can deal with other things. Or I'm in a, a bad spot currently even if it's not related to any sort of suicidal ideations, I will go through prolonged periods of really struggling to connect with people or feel any sort of positive emotion. So I have gotten better at that. I am constantly working on that, and it is an ever-evolving conversation as I learn more about myself, learn more about my depression, learn more about finding ways to understand things that push me over the edge, but also now trying to be more aware of how those things are hurting the people around me 
and also ways I can better communicate what those things are so the people around me that do care about me can help me when I need help. Because for me, the only way that I will make it through when things are bad and not just periodically bad, but hey, suicidal ideation is starting to set in bad, is that I have to be vocal about it, I have to be honest about it, I have to confront those things conversationally. Um, and as dumb as it might seem, having a podcast where I get to talk about whatever I want free of any sort of repercussions has helped me with it because I can just say things. I can choose to have a whole month of episodes that are just about mental health. And I can choose to kick that off by talking about my own mental health. So that's a little bit of a recap. Where am I now? Not great, it's been a rough couple weeks. Uh, I've really been struggling mentally, hasn't been good for me. Um, I feel very disconnected from the things I'm doing. I feel disconnected from the people I'm around. Lately, the idea of doing this podcast has seemed like a burden and I don't really want to do it, but I know I will regret it if I stop doing it right now because of the state that I'm in. So while I am not a push-through method type of person, um, because I believe you should accept the bad days for what they are, which are bad days, and celebrate the good days when you have them, it's been a series of bad days. And so I'm trying to live in those days and not feel like I have to put additional pressure on myself to make them something they are not because in the past when I have done that, when I have tried to just push through and know I'm happy and I'm going to do all the things that I think I should be able to do or expectations that I assume other people have for me, it puts me in a really bad spot. So I'm saying no to things that I don't want to do. I'm taking a step back. I'm trying to find ways to take time for myself when I can and not put pressure to feel something that I'm not currently feeling. So that's where I'm at. Full transparency. Not good, but it's going to be okay. I've had a lot of really bad days, but those bad days, as large as that number might be, is not what's going to happen forever. Good days will come, just as they have come in the past. And so I can accept that right now it's not what I want it to be but it is what it is, and that's okay. So I need to talk about it. I need to be honest about it. I need to play the game a little for work and put on a happy face and be energetic and make people feel comfortable. But then I have to allow myself the time and space to recover from the work that that is. This podcast being one of those things this is lower impact on me, but it's still work to sit here and do this. I've had the idea for this episode for almost two weeks. It's currently 8.55 on Monday night. This episode needs to be uploaded and ready to go by tomorrow morning. But once it's done, I'm going to feel good that it was done. So it's important that I do it. So what have I been doing to unwind or to... Find some sort of calm or rest after a long day of struggling to get through things. And this might sound weird, but I've been watching the original Twilight Zone from the 50s and 60s. Started with episode one, been watching two to three episodes every night. It's been amazing. It's great. It's such a nice palate cleanser at the end of the day. It is light. It is easy to digest. Most of them end super hopeful, which is not normally my go-to. I like things that, as I typically put it, I, I, I want a movie to hurt my feelings. I want to have a really bad time when I watch a movie. Um, but where I've been at recently, finding a show that just kind of washes over me has been really nice. So the original Twilight Zone has been great for that. I highly recommend it. It is streaming for free on Freebie. Um, so yeah, check it out. It's been great. I've, I've loved 
rewatching it. I've also been taking a break from a lot of the heavier news focused podcasts that I might listen to. I, I mean, I don't watch cable news or read any news publications for the most part. Um, but I do get a lot of my current affairs from podcasts. And lately I just haven't wanted to engage with a lot of it. So I am seeking out the things that I feel it's important for me to stay aware of and to not lose sight of. But outside of that, I've taken a break from a lot of those things. And then lastly, and it might seem counterintuitive because it would just kind of work, but I've really been focusing on more creative projects, some of them with deadlines, some without, and trying to shift my mind after work at the end of the day into focusing on those things because some of them have tentative deadlines, but outside of one or two people, no one is really waiting on me to complete them. Most people don't know about it. It's not something I have to talk about, not something I have to do check-ins for. It's just something I am pursuing because I want to pursue it because it interests me and it doesn't have to be anything I don't want it to be. And that is, that's nice. So I've been trying to focus on creative projects or things that interest me and don't tie back in any way to a daily checklist. So those are just a couple things that I've been up to that have been helpful for me. Um, I am going to link out to some resources, um, some articles on mental health awareness. Um, but I do want to mention on this week's episode of The House of Pod, I was the guest on it and we talk about long COVID. And at the end, we get into, because I was on the show, we get into mental health and talk about the effects of COVID, of the pandemic overall, on people's mental health. Um, and pretty brief conversation, but really where it ended up and kind of the last place I want to take this is the importance of just checking in with people. Um, if you see someone in your daily life that seems different or you can tell that they are faking their way through something, go out on a limb and ask them. Literal worst case scenario is that you're reading the situation wrong, but they know that you care about them because you ask. But if you are right and if they are struggling, they may feel seen in a way that no one has made them feel. You may be asking a question that no one has asked. And as someone who is here because someone asked, it does matter to ask those questions, no matter how uncomfortable it might make you or how weird it might seem to do a check-in like that. So watch out for each other, take care of each other, find resources um, if you need them, I hesitate to say reach out to me if you need help uh, because honestly I don't know if I have the capacity to help right now but if you are feeling something and you feel like you need to talk shoot me a message and if I can't be the one to listen I can find someone and I can connect you with someone who can so watch out for each other take care of your mental health and I'll talk to you next week Thanks for listening. Give it five stars, because my dad is awesome and cool.